In this lesson, we're going to cover basic printing concepts in Windows 2000 and Windows XP. Now, printing in Windows 2000 and XP is quite a bit more complex and more powerful, I might add, than the printing system used by either MS-DOS or Windows 9X. The critical difference between Windows XP and 2000 and earlier versions of Windows, such as Windows 95 and 98 or MS-DOS, is the fact that to Windows XP, a printer is not an actual physical printer device. Instead, a printer, from the Windows XP's operating system's perspective, is a logical software entity. This logical software entity that it calls a printer can control one or more physical printers. Let's take a look at how it works. The physical printer itself, the actual printer, is called the print device. As far as Windows XP is concerned, we still call it a printer, of course. As far as Windows XP is concerned, that is a print device. The print device works hand in hand with the print driver and the spooler. All of these components work together into a logical printer. So if you see an exam question on the A plus exam saying, what is a logical printer in Windows XP? It's composed of three different parts. The physical printer, which is called the print device, the print driver, and the spooler. Now, when you send a job to the printer, the logical printer, when I say sending a job to the printer in this lesson, we're not talking about the physical printer, we're talking about the logical software entity called a printer. When you send a job to the logical printer, the application that you're running, such as Microsoft Word or PowerPoint or whatever it is, sends the print job to the print spooler. The print spooler then works with the print driver to reformat the data that's coming from the application into a language that the print device, the actual physical printer, can understand. It might be PostScript. It might be PCL. It might be some proprietary language. Whatever it is, the print driver and the print spooler work together to reformat the data into a language that the print device can understand. Once that's done, it stores the print job in a file on the hard disk drive inside the spooler. At that point, the job is said to have been spooled. Then, the job is sent to the print device whenever it's available. If there's lots of jobs queued up, it might have to wait a minute for those to complete before the job actually gets sent to the print device. One of the neat features of this setup is the fact that you can actually configure your logical printer to start sending the job to the print device before it's done being spooled. And that way it prints faster. In other words, as soon as page one is done being processed and being converted, it's sent to the print device. And while that page is printing, your print driver and your spooler start working on page two and three and four. That way, about the same time that this print spooler and print driver are done processing the job, the last couple of pages are coming out of the print device itself. Remember that when you're talking with your fellow technicians and you say, I'm going to send a job to the printer, we're talking about the physical device. However, if we're talking about how Windows submits a job to a printer, remember that the concept of a printer from the operating system perspective is not the physical device at all, but it's a combination of the print driver the spooler, and the print device, the logical entity called the printer. Now, with that in mind, we're going to talk about connecting print devices to our PC. We're going to talk about connecting locally, primarily. When you connect a printer to the PC, one of two things is going to happen. If the printer is an older printer, probably a parallel port-based printer, more than likely Windows XP is not going to be able to detect it because it's not a plug-and-play device. If that's the case, then you're going to have to manually install that printer. If you go into your control panel, to your Printers and Faxes app, you can set up that printer manually. Now, some newer printers, especially those that use USB connections or FireWire connections, as soon as you plug those in, they're going to be automatically detected by Windows XP. Now, the rule of thumb for USB devices holds true with USB-based printers, and that is you should install your printer drivers for USB printers first before you plug the printer in for the first time. That way your system has the drivers that it needs. 
More than likely, depending on the type of the printer, you'll have a CD that's full of applications and drivers that need to be installed before you can install the printer. You have to check your documentation and see what needs to happen. But as, at a minimum, you need to install the drivers first, then plug your USB or 1394, if you happen to have one of those, printers in and let the Windows XP system automatically detect it and load the drivers. Now, once you've got your system set up, one of the first things you should do is print a test page to verify that the printer is working properly. And this goes for not only locally attached print devices, but also network printers as well. If the test page doesn't come out, you know you've got problems and you need to trace down and try to figure out what caused it. If the print page comes out properly, then you might need to calibrate your printer. Now for monochrome, black and white, grayscale printers, this is not that much of an issue. Some people who are purists still like to calibrate their grayscale printers. Most folks, because it's grayscale, say, well, it's close enough, right? But if you're dealing with a color printer, especially a very high-end color printer, you may need to calibrate it. Most printer drivers allow you to calibrate your printer. That means it allows you to customize how the colors appear in the printout. To do this, what you need to do is go onto the internet and download a test image. If you go to Google and put in test image or calibrate test image or printer calibrate test image into the search field, you'll probably find a whole ton of different images that you can download for calibration purposes. You download the image, display it on your monitor, and we're assuming here that you have your monitor colors set correctly. If not, you need to do that first. Assuming that your monitor is displaying the image correctly, then print that same image out on your printer and compare it with the image that's displayed on the screen. Depending on the device driver and depending on the type of the printer, there will be some type of interface in the device driver that will allow you to customize the colors until you get the best match between the printout